afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's a really great pleasure introducing our today's speaker, Wolfgang Kinzel, from the University of Würzburg. Uh, he has quite some impressive uh, CV, so it will take a little while to, to introduce him. He did his PhD already in 78 on uh, theory of spin glasses. That was at the University of Cologne in, uh, in Germany. And uh, after that, he went for several years to the Solid State Institute in, in Munich. What's the official English name for that, for the institute, you know? Well, Soviet State. Yeah. The one that's only in the yeah, part it's of it. Like the, the institute, yeah. I mean, uh, the, the whole uh, plan was called nuclear physics, but now it's no longer called nuclear physics. <laughs> Research, but it always had a lot of activity which had nothing to do with nuclear <laughs> energy. Um, and during that period, he also went for two postdocs, one at the Weizmann Institute in Israel and one at the University of Washington in Seattle uh, before becoming a professor in 1986, that's right, at the University of Gießen. So at that time, he was very close to where I was. We marveled that's only... 30 kilometers, mm -hmm. some, something like that apart. And he stayed there for six years at the Institute for Theoretical Physics. Uh, before in 92, he went to the University of Würzburg, where he still is, at the Institute for Theoretical Physics. And uh, Wolfgang Kinsler has been working on quite a, a selection of topics. So besides the spin glasses, he has been uh, working on phase transitions in his analytic systems. Uh, on uh, structure and dynamics of the growth of semiconductors, uh, statistical mechanics, computational physics, uh, complex systems, certainly, neural networks, uh, synchronization, and uh, also uh, contributing there a lot to how one can use uh, chaotic lasers for encryption. And he also discovered uh, at that time his interest in uh, networks with delays. Um, and that's also what he's uh, giving a talk on today. Besides all these very interesting, uh, really scientific activities, I also recommend going to his website and seeing uh, a number of really nice Java applets uh, on physics of complex systems, but you don't need to do virtual. Uh, he has also published a beautiful board game um, on a model of uh, uh, Buck and Wiesenfeld, right? Uh, related to uh, criticality, uh, avalanches, and uh, I had the pleasure to play it once and lose terribly. <laughs> um, uh, it is really a fantastic board game based uh, on some physics theory, and I can recommend it. It has been published in uh, which uh, publishing was it? Spectrum der Wissenschaft? Yeah, it's no longer produced, unfortunately. It's not produced, <laughs> so uh, if you're not lucky that you bought it already. <laughs> 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 But I think you can play it virtually. I, I will send a copy to this institute. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we will. So the title of the talk today is Chaos Synchronization of Networks with Time Day Black yeah. by Couplings. We're very happy to have you here. Yeah, thank you, Angel, for this kind of introduction. And in particular for the hospitality here uh, at this institute, uh, where we can where I can learn a lot here from, from physics or from the system. Okay, so let's go to chaos synchronization of networks with time delayed couplings. So, that's my old fashion. Uh, and uh, so the content is uh, I'm considering network of nonlinear units with time delayed interactions. And uh, we recently uh, discovered <coughs> that we can find in these networks two kinds of chaos, which we call strong and weak and uh, which uh, also show up in, in the lasers. And I'm talking only about complete chaos here for the moment. Yeah? I'm not talking about this Ecrono, uh, uh, complete synchronization, not complete chaos, complete synchronization, not, not phase synchronization, not achronal synchronization and all the other types of synchronizations which were, had been studied previously. And uh, so I'm uh, in uh, particular investigating the properties of the master stability function, I explain what it is, and the spectral gap of the coupling matrix. 
and, uh, and uh, then we go to multiple delays and to cluster. And uh, the co-authors here uh, are f is my group from, from Würzburg, Anja Englert. Unfortunately, she is no longer in, in uh, uh, academics. Uh, she uh, finished her PhD and immediately found a nice job in a satellite communication system close to Stuttgart. So just to encourage you that you have a good, a good uh, career. <coughs> And uh, Sven Heiligetal, Thomas Jüngling, uh, in, in fact, he is just right from Darmstadt here. <coughs> and we have a collaboration with, a long, on, ongoing collaboration with Barilan University in Israel. Uh, so this is Würzburg, this is Israel, if you can The university, I mean. this belongs to the university in Würzburg, and this is a uh, tower in Barilan University. <coughs> And uh, recently also we started a color, and, and, and this is a group of Ido Kanta from the theory side and Michael Rosenblum from the experimental side, from the laser physics side. And, uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, recently we also started a collaboration with uh, people from the Technical University, group of Eckhart Scholl. Uh, Sergi Janschuk will complain because he is in the Humboldt University, not in the Technical University. And so it's time maybe to add also Palma to this uh, collaboration. In fact, we started already in collaboration, do you remember? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> you see, this guy is still <laughs> cool. <laughs> So networks of nonlinear units. Uh, of course, we are, as you are, interested in the cooperative behavior of nonlinear units and in networks, its relation to say laser networks, uh, communication, but also to neurons, and uh, and in many systems you have a time delay. Coupling, of course, you know in laser, if you have here a few meter between the units, uh, the transmission time is very long compared to the time scale of the single laser. And, uh, <coughs> and I'm only considering invasive coupling, so chaos only comes from the coupling. Yeah? Each single unit is not chaotic, but uh, only due to the coupling, the, the whole network becomes chaotic. And uh, as I said, I'm only uh, looking at complete chaos con con uh, synchronization without time shift. So although the transmission time here may be very long, may be very long, I mean these units can synchronize without any time shift. Yeah? And uh, in fact, this is a puzzle in neurobiology, how two neurons can synchronize uh, uh, without any time shift, although the transmission time is is rather long. So also from this point of view here, it's, it's an interesting uh, general uh, subject. And I'm talking about cluster synchronization, which means maybe these units here can synchronize completely, and the other ones do not. I mean, it's not the case in this network, but in other networks as well. The, the arrows mean uh, that uh, this unidirectional coupling? Yes, for example. One, one type of network I'm, I'm discussing, but also bidirectional coupling. <coughs> and uh, of course, I do not have to show this <laughs> graph here because it belongs to the, to the local research. <coughs> uh, so, but this is a scenario, I mean, uh, which uh, Michael Rosenblum in Israel realized. So you have two laser, uh, the laser has the feedback and the laser are coupled bidirectionally, yeah? not unidirectionally. And then uh, you see, I mean, these well-known uh, patterns of uh, intensity as a function of times. And, and uh, these two lasers can synchronize on a, on a <coughs> picosecond uh, time scale, yeah? very nicely without any time shift. Although here the transmission time 
Here is, say, 20, I think in this case it was about 20 nanoseconds, and 20 nanoseconds is very long compared to, to this uh, uh, picosecond uh, or uh, 10, 20 picosecond uh, synchronization, which, which shows up here. And, uh, and in the European collaboration with Ingo and many others, uh, uh, and Claudio, uh, people have shown that it's even possible to synchronize two lasers over 120 kilometers in a, in a uh, glass fiber network of, of, of Athens in this case. But this was unidirectional, and uh, when we entered this field, we thought maybe. Uh, with bidirectional coupling, with synchronization with bidirectional, complete synchronization with bidirectional coupling, you can, you can do something with respect to secure communication. And uh, I will not go into the details here, but we have uh, uh, recently published the following scenario. You have uh, two uh, nonlinear units which are coupled and uh, to a common chaotic uh, trajectory. And as, as was the case in this, uh, in this uh, unidirectional uh, system of 120 kilometers. But here it's bidirectional one. And if this unit has a private filter, and this unit has a private filter, which is not known to anybody else, but if this unit drives this laser here, for example, over this filter plus this filter, and this unit drives this uh, unit here over this filter and this filter, and if these two filter commute, then they obtain the same drive and they can synchronize the common chaotic trajectory. But anybody who is only knowing uh, recording this signal cannot synchronize, at least not so easily by hardware and also software attack we ruled out by some additional tricks. But uh, uh, this was, uh, so this is uh, public cryptography. Every, uh, no, everybody knows all the details, yeah? all the algorithm, all the laser parameters, all the details. Uh, so everybody knows as much as B knows about A. And everybody knows as much as A knows about B, but nevertheless, these two units can synchronize and the third one cannot. Yeah, this is plain. Also, any transmitted message is known, any details of the algorithm are known, any laser parameters and so on are known. Well, we have shown it not for laser, but for iterated maps. And up to now, uh, it's, it's still an open problem how to realize this with laser. So maybe with the new equipment here, in, in particular with a glass fiber, multi, multi delay glass fiber uh, 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 transmission line, maybe you can, uh, you can realize such, such uh, secret filter. Okay. So let's now go to, to general networks. For instance, this one. And what is the dynamics of these networks? Which it's a, it's a network of identical nonlinear units. Identical nonlinear units. Because if, if they are not identical, you cannot synchronize completely. And so you need identical uh, nonlinear units. And uh, you have a network here which is described by a set of differential equations. So you have a local dynamics and you have a dynamics coming from these couplings. So the total coupling strength is sigma here, and then you have a coupling matrix, and you have a coupling function, and, and you have a coupling uh, which is transmitted by delay. So you have a delay, delayed coupling in this network. And in order to obtain complete synchronization, you need that this sum here of the matrix element does not depend on the first index. Yeah, so you need a constant row sum of this coupling matrix. Because then the synchronization manifold, the synchronization is the solution of this set of equations. Yeah, you have many, many equations here, but uh, this is the solution of the equation when the coupling matrix has a constant row sum. 
And uh, so we are only considering uh, systems where this equation here is chaotic. Yeah, this equation is chaotic. The first equation is not chaotic because we have non-chaotic units, but due to this term it becomes chaotic. And you see here uh, the synchronization solution is just a single unit with time delay feedback. Yeah, so before we start discussing the network, we have to understand what is happening here. A single unit with time delayed feedback. And uh, <coughs> so we first we discuss this equation. A yeah? single unit with time delayed feedback. So we have a local term in time, an instantaneous term, and we have a delay term <coughs> with some coupling strengths. And uh, as many of you know here, it's uh, due to this delay term, this uh, problem becomes immediately infinite dimensional because uh, yeah, in a typical differential equation, I mean, you just need, say, three points to start the equation. You, you need a whole function to start the equation, so the problem becomes infinite dimensional and uh, and it's also well known that due to these delay terms, instabilities can occur, and these instabilities can, can create chaos. <coughs> and uh, since uh, the problem is infinite dimensional, you have of many uh, Lyapunov exponents, and so you get a whole spectrum of Lyapunov exponents. Many of them may be positive, that's what you usually call hyperchaos. And, uh, and, uh, and we found out that we also have two different types. We can distinguish between two different uh, types of this equation. So how do you determine Lyapunov exponents? You typically, you linearize this equation around, uh, around some solution. And so the linearized equation has uh, the Jacobi matrix here, the derivative. And the Jacobi matrix here, also the derivative. And then it's a linear differential equation, but with time dependent coefficients. And the coefficients just uh, have uh, the chaotic uh, traje trajectory here inserted. Yeah? So you have time dependent coefficients here coming from the chaotic or non chaotic trajectory. And uh, you have to investigate this stability of this deviation here from a, from a uh, solution. And if this uh, deviation explodes, you know that the system is chaotic. Yeah? You have sensitivity to initial collisions, and you know that you have chaos. So you have to investigate this equation. Is it stable or is it not uh, unstable? <coughs> now, <coughs> Let's assume we can ignore here this time dependence of these coefficients. And let's assume we can just make it one dimensional. Yeah, we just have numbers here instead of a matrix, of a time dependent matrix. Then you can make the usual ansatz, which you learn in the first semester of your uh, undergraduate courses, just an exponential ansatz. And this will give you this equation here yeah, for this. Uh, coefficient here, lambda, which is called the other one. Yeah, describes how strong chaos is. <coughs> well, if it is positive, it describes how strong chaos is. If it is negative, then it's, it's, uh, the perturbation decays, so it's not sensitive to initial conditions. Now you have to solve this equation. And mathematicians know how to solve it, but if you look, if you look into this equation, you may immediately see what happens if the delay time is very long, yeah? if the delay time is very large. Because when tau goes to infinity, this term may disappear when lambda remains constant. Yeah? When tau goes to infinity, this term disappears, and then lambda is just this coefficient a. This is the first case. And it happens all when, when, uh, lambda, uh, when A is positive. Yeah? Then lambda is just A. But 
when tau goes to infinity, this term may uh, stay finite. Yeah, this term may stay finite, so the product of lambda times tau may go to a constant in the limit of tau going to infinity, and then you have two terms here, this term and this term, and uh, this you can solve, and then you find lambda has this value, which also depends on b. Here lambda does not depend on b, here lambda depends on b. But here lambda goes as 1 over tau. Yeah? Whereas here lambda is of order 1 in the limit of tau going to infinity, here lambda goes to, as 1 over tau. And recently Sergei Janschuk has uh, proven this uh, uh, for the general case uh, with any time dependent uh, matrices here that uh, you always have in the limit of tau going to infinity these two cases. Either you can ignore the delay term and then the Lyapunov exponent is just given by the local one, yeah, just by, by this equation, just by this equation inserting here the chaotic trajectory, or the uh, lambda exponent is of order 1 over tau. And then you have, really have to find it uh, numerically, say, solving. Uh, this equation here. But, uh, so you have two cases, strong chaos, where lambda is just given by the undelayed term, the Lyapunov exponent, and weak chaos, where lambda is of order 1 uh, over tau. And this has important consequences for the synchronization of the network. Yeah, this was a discussion just for a single unit without any relation to the network of the synchronization manifold. But this has consequences for the network. But before we go to the network, let's check it for the laser. Unfortunately, up to now, we only have simulation for Langhoff energy equation. The colleagues in Israel are working hard on, on that. I hope they can find something. And, uh, and uh, so what, what does it mean for the laser? <coughs> so the laser uh, described by the rate equation here also well known here. Uh, here is the strength of the coupling. I mean the strength of the coupling enters, of course, always because it changes the trajectory here. Yeah, even in this case, where the delay term drops out, the strength of the coupling changes the, uh, the trajectory of the synchronization manifold. Yeah. So the strength of the coupling changes the trajectory always. And so this is what happening here. Well, for without any coupling, the laser is non-chaotic. Yeah. Unfortunately, I didn't show the zoom here. I shown that. Uh, the laser is non-chaotic, so the uh, maximal Lyapunov exponent is zero. But for very, very weak coupling already, the, max, the, the largest Lyapunov exponent becomes positive and the system, the system is chaotic. Yeah? The, the maximum Lyapunov exponent here is always, except the very tiny region here, uh, positive. So the system is always chaotic later, yeah? with time delay feedback. But when you look now for the local Lyapunov exponent, so the Lyapunov exponent lambda zero, which just comes from, from this term here, yeah, if you just solve this equation numerically and calculate the Lyapunov exponent of this term here, then you find even if the system is chaotic, it's still negative, then it becomes positive. And when it's positive, it's identical to the Lyapunov exponent of the whole system. And then it goes, uh, there's a transition to negative value, and uh, it's negative. And in this case, the maximum Lyapunov exponent goes here, like 1 over tau to 0. Here it stays constant with tau, and here it goes one as 1 over tau to 0. So the laser, the single laser, changes from no chaos 
to weak chaos, to strong chaos, to weak chaos, and you increase the coupling. Yeah, I mean, we have also investigated Russell and Lorentz and other systems, and uh, we also find these changes, not in this, uh, in this manner, and, uh, but uh, again, I mean, you can see transition between strong and weak chaos, and uh, so here on this side, the uh, Lyapunov exponent of the system goes to, to lambda zero, and here it goes to, as one over tau to zero. <coughs> And what does it mean here in this picture <coughs> uh, uh, of, the, of the laser? Yeah, I mean, here you plot the laser intensity uh, as a function between zero and tau, and then you repeat it in multiples of, of tau, so you get this uh, space-time uh, picture. Uh, and uh, when the chaos is strong, the sensitivity to chaos appears already here in this picture. When the chaos is weak, sensitivity to initial conditions, conditions appears only here, yeah, in, in multiples of time steps. So it changes time scale. Yeah, the, here the chaos uh, uh, is visible uh, in, uh, in, uh, in short time, whereas here chaos is visible only in a, in a, in a long time. Uh, time scale. And for synchronization, uh, as we will show soon, it means here synchronization is possible, here synchronization is impossible. Yeah, for all. Uh, uh, <coughs> now, what has this to do with synchronization? Let's go back to the network. Network again. And uh, <coughs> so you have to solve this dynamics. And then uh, Pecora and Carroll invented a clever method to uh, reduce the stability of the synchronization manifold to a single equation. Not to a network equation, just to a single equation. And how can you do that? Well, you look at the eigenvectors of this matrix, K, G, G, and the eigenvalues. Yeah, the eigenvectors and eigenvalues. And if you do that, uh, you end up for an equation for the amplitude of a special eigenvector. Yeah? You linearize this equation, and then uh, the perturbations are just linear modes. Yeah? So you can decompose the perturbation into linear in, in the modes and do the eigenvectors of this matrix G. And each eigenvector has then some amplitude, has some eigenvalue and some amplitude, and the stability of this mode is, de is determined by this equation. Yes, as the equation, same equation as before, just the sigma is replaced by the product sigma times eigenvalue. Yes, this, and the mass of stability means uh, the Lyapunov exponent as a function of gamma here, this is the master stability function. Since we are uh, looking into a chaotic, well, since this, the rho sum is one, eigenvalue one is always, uh, the eigenvalue one is always an eigenvalue yeah, of this matrix. And it turns out it's also the largest one when the matrix elements are all positive. <coughs> So uh, this is a perturb, and it turns out the eigenvector is one, 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 one. It turns out that the perturbation to the eigenvalue value plus one is just a perturbation in the direction of the synchronization manifold, whereas all other eigenvalues give you contributions perpendicular, perpendicular to the synchronization manifold. So if you want to know whether the synchronization is stable, you have to check whether this equation here is stable, so does not explode for all other eigenvalues of the coupling matrix except gamma equal 1. Because gamma equal 1, the system is chaotic and therefore this equation is unstable. Yeah, but here a dot is missing. But for uh, for, uh, for all other eigenvalues, it should be stable. So it's quite interesting because the dynamics of a single unit 
the linear equation even, determines the stability of the synchronization for any network. For any network, yeah? You just have to insert the eigenvalues of the network here. And it turns out uh, that for when you, when you uh, go to a discrete system instead of continuous one, if you go to iterated maps, it turns out that you can do something analytically. In particular, when the iterated map is just this Bernoulli shift, shift because then the derivative f prime is just this constant a. And then you can solve this equation exactly, analytically, at least uh, at the limit of power into infinity, because you just have to look for the roots of this polynomial. Yeah, the linearized equation just becomes a polynomial, and you just have to check whether, the polyn whether all the uh, roots of this polynomial are in the unit circle or not. Yeah, this is how, to che how you check uh, uh, the stability of the synchronization method. So you have to go to the theory of polynomials and, and look what they are telling you. I mean, there are tricks how to calculate the parameter uh, regions where the system is stable or unstable and so on. But you have to keep in mind now with iterated maps for a delay time tau, which is now discrete, uh, you have tau Lyapon of exponents. So for each perturbation here, you have tau Lyapunov exponent. So each perturbation, each eigenvector of the coupling matrix gives you a whole spectrum here of Lyapunov exponent. And again, when this value here is larger than 1, then you have a 1, uh, beta 0 is just for the, the product here, you have 1, uh, eigen, uh, you have 1 Lyapunov exponent, which is of order 1, strong chaos, and all the others are of order 1 over tau. Whereas here, all of them are of order 1 over tau, so all of them shrink to 0 when tau goes to infinity. <coughs> but this you have now for each mode, yeah. for each perturbation mode, so for each eigenvalue. And, uh, okay, you can do the analytic calculation, very easy in this case. And uh, you find the system is stable, the network is stable, the synchronization manifold is stable, so you can have chaos synchronization. When the second largest eigenvalue is smaller than e to minus Lyapunov exponent times tau. Yeah? The Lyapunov exponent is just the Lyapunov exponent of a single unit with delay. And when you have weak chaos, this product for tau going to infinity remains constant. In this case, you can have chaos synchronization. But when you have strong chaos, this is of order 1, and when tau goes to infinity, you never can have this uh, in inequality. And gamma 1 is the second largest eigenvalue of the coupling matrix. The largest is always 1. And, uh, and uh, uh, the second largest here is the gamma one. So the eigenvalue gap of the coupling matrix and the Lyapunov exponent of a single unit determine synchronization of the whole network. So this is an exact result coming from Bernoulli networks, but we still believe it's true in the general case. But this is only a belief, yeah? we can improve it. We can only check it numerically. Yeah, for instance, uh, for a pair of units, gamma 1 is minus 1. Yeah? So a pair of lasers cannot be synchronized completely. Yeah? You can only have archonal synchronization, yeah? time shifted uh, large. Uh, correlations. <coughs> so for any bipartite network, uh, gamma 1 is minus 1, so it cannot be synchronized. No? But, uh, but uh, there are other networks which have an eigenvalue gap and they can synchronize. 
and reject it. Yeah, so for a pair of units, it cannot be synchronized. A triangle, however, there gamma 1 is minus 1 half, so this can be synchronized. Uh, for, for if the chaos is sufficiently weak, yeah, if lambda max is, is close enough to, to zero, but this you can change with a couple of things. No problem. <coughs> And uh, for a square again, uh, gamma is minus one again, a square cannot be synchronized. <coughs> but, uh, we, but there are networks where this gamma one is a complex number, a complex number. And so we checked it for a laser network where gamma one is a complex number, yeah? just to, to see whether this equation is still true. So we checked it for four lasers, Lankobayashi equation, with directed ones directed ones, and uh, so without this diagonal, the, the network cannot synchronize any ring of the uh, uh, unidirectional <coughs> ring cannot synchronize, but if you have here this shortcut, then you see the eigenvalue, uh, you have an eigenvalue gap, yeah? a difference between one and the eigenvalue. Yeah? You have an eigenvalue gap. In fact, we can analytically calculate this value here uh, for, for any, uh, for any uh, network, it turns out. <coughs> okay, <coughs> so what you need here to see to, to, uh, for this equation, you, you have to know lambda max as a function of sigma, which I have shown before, and you have to know the eigenvalue gap here. And then uh, <coughs> you obtain here the black dots. Here the, the black dots. So here is this parameter rho. And here is the sigma of the uh, laser. Note that here is a change in scale. Yeah? So here is 0.4 and here is 180 uh, per nanosecond, <coughs> which means that uh, you can get synchronization only in this figure, only here. And, and far outside here. <coughs> yeah, but you see, you get, here you have uh, complete synchronization and here you have complete synchronization. In addition, we simulated the whole net, so this was just from this equation, but in addition, we simulated the whole network and uh, calculated the cross correlation between two units. And uh, these are the, the crosses here, I think, with the cross correlation in the simulation is larger than 0.98 or so, we, we came it across. And you see, I mean, the agreement uh, due to fluctuation, up to fluctuations, is uh, remarkably good yeah, between these two phase diagrams. We do not know is this numerics or is this really a physical deviation from this equation? Yeah, this we do not know. And we cannot also, we cannot prove this relation for the general system. Yeah, it's also a challenge to do that. So this comes just from analytic calculation of Benoli network. Okay, but for Bernoulli networks, we can even go one step further and, uh, and investigate what is happening. I mean, two lasers with a single uh, coupling bidirectional coupling cannot synchronize completely. But what happens if we split the laser beam and make a detour in addition to the laser beam? So we have coupling <coughs> with two delay times now. Yeah, coupling with two delay times because the laser beam is splitted. One goes with tau 2 and one goes with tau 1 <coughs> delay. And uh, if you analyze now the Bernoulli uh, system, you again get a polynomial. And if you look to this polynomial, you find symmetries. Yeah, symmetries for, symbol, for uh, symbolization. And it turns out when the ratio of these two uh, delay times is in a ratio of two integers, which are relatively prime and which are both odd, then uh, chaos synchronization is not possible. But in all other cases, it's possible if you adjust the parameters. <coughs> and this we did in an experiment with two semiconductor lasers. 
and here's the ratio of these two delay times here, which can be adjusted. <coughs> so if it is 2, 2 to 1, so this is allowed here, 2 to 1. Yeah? <coughs> 2 to 1 is allowed by symmetry, <coughs> and in fact, we, in the experiment, we saw something close to 1. Also, in, uh, I think this, this is sim sim simulation and this is the experiment. Yeah? So, okay, close to 1 means here. Yeah. 0.9, 0.95. But if you take the ratio to 3 to 1, 3 to 1 is not allowed, and in fact the cross correlation here is, is uh, very low. I don't know the point here is six. But. And, uh, and uh, so, and here for example, 5 to 3, the correlation is very low. 3 to 2 is again allowed. Uh, the cross correlation is high. Yeah? At least, I mean, this symmetry shows up in the value of the cross correlation between two lasers. Yeah, but so, if you have not one single delay times, but two delay times with special ratio, you find synchronization. Although we have observed when the, when the integers here are rather large, then the, uh, the chance to get synchronization is very low. Yeah? You don't find it anymore. <coughs> okay. We also, in the Bernoulli networks, we also can calculate exactly sensitivity to uh, detuning. For instance, when you have a feedback delay time tau 1 and a coupling delay time uh, also tau 1 plus a little uh, detuning. Yeah, so in the Bernoulli network, one is sufficient. So let's uh, say one delay time is one million and one delay time is one million plus one. So immediately chaos synchronization disappears. Yeah? You cannot synchronize this condition. Yeah, when both are one million, they synchronize, but one, and one is one million and the other one is one million plus one, <laughs> it's over. And as you know here, also sensitivity to detuning can be seen in experiment on laser. I mean, this is simulation of experiment. But of course, uh, you have additional structure coming from the physics of lasers, which do not show up in, in the Bernoulli network. Uh, it's interesting that. Uh, it's interesting that uh, uh, the eigenvalue gap has something to do with the loop structure of the network. And it turns out, also already can be seen in the mathematics textbooks, when uh, the uh, eigenvalue gap is non-zero, when the greatest common divisor of all loop lengths of all loop lengths is one. Yeah, so the eigenvalue gap of the coupling matrix has something to do with the greatest common divisor of all loops in the network. So it's a global property. It's not like, like a, it's not a motive property. Yeah? It's a global property. A single shortcut or a single delay already can create uh, uh, <coughs> an eigenvalue gap. Yeah, for instance, in this network here. Here you have a loop length 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and you have a loop 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And the greatest common divisor be between 6 and 5 is 1. So this network has an eigenvalue gap and so you can have complete synchronization if lambda max times tau is sufficient degree. Yeah, if this inequality is, uh, is given. But you see here, here you have again the 6, but then you have 1, 2, 3, 4. And the greatest common divisor is 2. And uh, with 2, the eigenvalue gap disappears when it's not 1, but when it's 2, another value the eigenvalue gap disappears, it's zero. Complete synchronization is not, no longer possible, but <coughs> cluster synchronization is possible. 
Yeah? So here the green units synchronize completely with our time shift. The red units synchronize completely with our time shift. Also, the red units are not connected directly, only indirectly. <clears throat> yeah, so here you have cluster synchronization. And here you have one, one, two, three. So the greatest common divisor is three. So you have three subheads. Yeah? And this we have checked with also laser equation and also comes out. I mean, this is a general property of uh, of uh, these chaotic networks <coughs> where in, in the limit of, of large delay uh, where, where uh, this equation is true yeah? <coughs> because here the eigenvalue gap determines synchronization yeah? and lambda max times power sufficient unit but it can change by changing the <coughs> And it also works with uh, multiple delay times, surprisingly. Also this loop structure. I mean, you, you just have to think about these internal uh, vir virtual units, yeah, which you just explained to me <laughs> one hour ago. <coughs> and then uh, you have this loop structure here, 2 plus 1. No, here you have uh, the loop 1, 2. And here you have the loop 2, 1, and the greatest common divisor between 3 and 2 is 1. So this system can synchronize completely. Yeah, as I have shown you in, in the experiment before, and uh, also due to the symmetry of the polynomials, you can also derive that. And the same here. A unidirectional triangle cannot synchronize, but when you add uh, these bonds, it synchronizes. If you add only one bond, you still have this uh, loop structure, but there you can see that it cannot synchronize completely, but you get a very high correlation, cross correlation. <coughs> yeah? I mean, when you add virtual units, it could synchronize completely, but you, when you remove it, you see that this unit doesn't get the same drive as this one. And so you can only get a high correlation in that condition. Yeah? When you speak about virtual units, do you mean the same units than the, than the real yeah. ones? So you add, add some unit here, and, and they consider the equivalent network where one unit is added. Then you have here uh, same delay everywhere, uh, and then uh, the greatest common divisor for so mathematics applies. Not the same. No, no, it's not the same. It's not the same. So the no, no, it's not the same, but it gives you a condition for, for synchronization. That's true. No, you, you do not get the same here on the vector. That's true. It's just, I mean, we do, here we don't have a mathematical proof that this must be true. It's just our physical intuition that, uh, uh, that the information here about one of about each trajectory has to mix to get complete synchronization. Or when you have cluster synchronization, the information inside of the cluster has to mix. So what do I mean with that here? Yeah, mixing information. Let's assume you have a network like this. And you color it in different colors. And then you consider units of time steps tau. Yeah? So you just iterate these colors in units of time step tau. So on the first time step, yellow goes to the right, uh, red goes down, and here blue goes to here and green goes to here. <clears throat> so you mix blue and green. Yeah? So the trajectories here and here are mixed. And if you iterate this, you find out all colors appear here uh, uh, on, on each side. Which means the all, all these different trajectories are mixed somehow. And this is a physical argument. You need this mixing before you can have complete synchronization. And in fact, this mixing here can be related to 
to, mar to, to powers of this uh, uh, coupling matrix and uh, again to this uh, greatest common divisor uh, argument. Yeah. Okay. So, do I understand this interpretation right that if you have um, uh, the greatest common divisor bigger than one, you don't get more or less homogeneous mixing of information? That's right. Then you have <coughs> only uh, sub lattice mixing, which went to shift it. cluster synchronization by topology. But you also can have cluster synchronization without uh, this uh, topological argument. And this is, you see here, at some point we asked ourselves, when we have two chaotic networks, how many links do we need to synchronize them? <coughs> yeah, so this, I, I gave this problem for bachelor thesis for six week projects. And after two days, the guy already came with a solution, <laughs> with an analytic solution. Oh, very nice. Uh, I mean, what you have to do is, of course, to, to calculate just the eigenvalue gap, yeah? just the eigenvalues of this matrix, of this coupling matrix. And this we saw immediately how to do this. I didn't see it. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> and uh, so you can calculate again the eigenvalue gap. In this case, and you find when n is finite, then a single unit is already enough to synchronize the two networks uh, because you have an eigenvalue gap. When n goes to infinity, you need a, a finite uh, a fraction of order n between the two networks to synchronize, to synchronize them. Of course, with a coupling strengths which is large compared to the coupling strengths inside here. Yeah? Because inside you have n squared couplings and between you have only n couplings and the total strength has to be balanced somehow. Okay, but... So, uh, but, but each uh, coupling matrix has to be fully connected. Yes, although Because this was the strongest case we could imagine. Yeah? I mean, the, the, you really have strongly connected subnetworks which try to be to stay independent. And so the question was how many un uh, couplings you need to synchronize them. Of course, also something which may be of biological relevance. <coughs> but I want to point out here here you can also have a uh, cluster synchronization. Yeah? Because here is the coupling strength, and here is this parameter epsilon, which appears in our uh, uh, iterated map uh, system. So here's the strength of the total delay terms, and here's just the strength of the coupling between the two subnetworks. <coughs> and you see, here you have a region which I just discussed, complete synchronization. But before you reach complete synchronization, you have sub or system synchronization, cluster synchronization. In this case, the whole cluster is completely synchronized except this unit here, because this unit gets a drive from the other guy. And uh, so this is uh, completely synchronized except this unit again. And, uh, and so you have cluster synchronization. When epsilon is very small here, then chaos becomes strong. And so synchronization is not possible. <coughs> yeah, chaos becomes strong, so the local, the instantaneous term determines instability, and then it's the end. Okay, so I have discussed chaos synchronization without time shift for arbitrary delay times. Of course, I did not discuss the transients, yeah? so how long does the system need to go into this synchronized state? I just discussed stability of the synchronized state. Yeah? The transients, I mean, if you're investigating now, 
is something which is uh, even uh, more interesting. Than that. Uh, and when we have strong and weak uh, chaos, for strong chaos we don't have synchronization. Uh, okay, we can calculate the mass stability function for Bernoulli nets exactly. And, but we believe that this is the case for all networks and for all uh, units, uh, uh, namely the stability of the synchronization manifold is determined by the eigenvalue gap and the Yapanov exponent of a single unit is zero. Using this we can calculate phase diagrams for any networks and uh, for multiple delays, we found symmetries, which also uh, seem to be true for uh, not only for Bernoulli networks, but for other networks as well. And uh, for other networks, they are based on this mixing argument, yeah? mixing of uh, information on chaotic trajectories. And the greatest uh, common divisor of the loop lengths determines uh, a cl uh, synchronization and cluster synchronization and but we also have cluster synchronization for hierarchical networks for instance these two which are coupled and uh, many of these results are based on uh, exact analytic calculation for Bernoulli networks but surprisingly we find them also in simulation experiments on other systems so for example on, on semiconductors Well, the eigenvalue gap we can determine in the limit of n going to infinity analytically. We have the analytic formula for n. And then what happens? Is synchronization easier? I don't remember how it goes with n, but uh, this doesn't change much. But, uh, sorry, I have to look into the text. Okay. But still, uh, anyway, we still didn't publish it yet. But to look into the I, I, I have the feeling that something qualitatively different happens when the system becomes very large. Well, what we do, of course, is to keep the strength of all incoming uh, signals I'm, I'm here constant. I'm sorry, I'm not talking only about this particular example of fully connected, but in general, for any of the networks that, that you consider. Well, the, uh, for an auto all network and also for the uh, network with directed bonds, if you do it correctly, in the limit of n going to infinity, the eigenvalue gap becomes maximal. So synchronization is easier. That's true. Yeah, for an auto all network, when n goes to infinity, the eigenvalue is one, one, uh, uh, one over n minus one, the negative minus one over n mm -hmm. minus one, and and so uh, the eigenvalue gap is maximal, so it goes to one. Also, when you add a feedback, yeah, it's much easier to synchronize. You also show the case that you have a, like a ring or a configuration if you have the nodes with the toe different between them. What would happen if you put all together without any delay and just one delay which is n times the delay. Well, <coughs> this, uh, I mean this equation here, huh? this equation is only true when tau is large. When tau is not large, it's, it's, uh, it depends on model. Well, I'm not saying that. You say you have the nodes, yeah. and each node is separated by, by, by a tau that can be very large. Each node. Now I say, you take, let's suppose you take six nodes with six things. Now each of the relation tau. Now I take the six node, put all together without any delay, and take six times tau delay. A single delay of six times tau. 
what would you expect in the field? So you have a network without delay. Connected with a, with a single delay six yeah. times. And then I think it depends so strongly on the model of what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I, I think, uh, at least in, from my experience, with short delay, you cannot make general statements. <coughs> First, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure that people don't, have, we don't find any difference. Yes. But uh, I was not sure if it is model independent, model dependent or not. Mm -hmm. I mean, for iterated maps, yeah? otherwise you cannot do it. I mean, for laser, what is, what is coming to you? Well, in mean, laser, laser, you need infinity mm -hmm. many lasers what? for continuous stuff. But with electronic circuits, what is coming to you? No, it's a good error, sorry. Yeah. You also mentioned that your units are not uh, chaotic when they are isolated. Yes. But these results seem to imply that the type of dynamics that they have have very little influence. Well, uh, <coughs> because you see it here. So each unit is non-chaotic as a laser. But when you add coupling, you immediately go to chaos. Yes, but what I mean is that, I mean, the only condition you put on the, on the dynamics of the isolated unit is that it is not chaotic. But there might be very different types of dynamics, and that seems... Right not to play any role, which is surprising yeah. to me. Yeah, so uh, what the only condition I, I say is when you, we are considering only cases where uh, the delayed system is chaotic. I mean, okay, except the small part here, but uh, in general I discuss only networks or, or systems where the system with delay is chaotic. And the, a single unit with delay is chaotic. But this is not the case, of course, when you have oscillator, oscillators or just stable uh, dynamics, uh, then it's different. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if I understood it correctly, but um, the fact that you say that was it, I don't know if it was true um, already or not, but uh, that strong chaos is not synchronizable. Yes. Is that a general feature, or did you just prove that <coughs> the mini or is that a, a general law-like thing? Is it, a con is it a conjecture for for the general case? Well, if this is true in the general case, or at least approximately true, then you see here when lambda max is of order one, then lambda max times tau is infinity, and so this is zero. Yeah? When you have, so when you have a positive number here, this goes to zero, then this equation cannot be fulfilled for la, in the limit of large tau. I think it relates to the classification of the Funk on this main stuff, right? Yes. When you talk about type of thing and stuff. So that's indeed a property which seems to hold in general. Yes. And the mixing argument is very nice. Now, uh, you should apply also emotional forms of synchronization. No? I mean, this is a specific case, but if you extend it somehow, or I would expect that this mixing argument is a strong part, uh, you should apply to, you know, generalize well, we, we didn't uh, think in this direction yet. I, I always have the feeling that, uh, that oscillators uh, allow more than, than chaos synchronization. For instance, when you detune oscillator, you get these Arnold times. Yeah? So they can lock into a common frequency. I think in chaos synchronization, this is not possible. And uh, so when you have networks of oscillator, you can have antiphase, or uh, you can have this phase, phase, phase shift. You can have these chimera states, and, uh, and so all these complex systems, which presumably are difficult to analyze in this direction. But Maybe one should invest something. But the mixing only formulates the necessary condition, right? Not a sufficient condition. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I, I mean, it's only the case when you when you can when you can can make lambda max times tau sufficiently weak.
but typically you have a control parameter which brings you through to, to non-chaos and, uh, and typically uh, I've, I've never seen an example where lambda is discontinuous with the with parameters. Uh, there are different cases of, uh, of systems that can be coupled with the way you consider two, you can have more the same ways. As, but there is a difference in the sense that, for example, in optical coupling, the phase is L, and the phase of the feedback is a significant row. Your resolve does not, the phase of the coupling does not appear anywhere. The is you have to delay time. So, is yeah. this valid in a regime where the yeah. tau is long enough that the phase is not the other one, or is that the system accommodates to the more to the appropriate phase so that the system synchronizes? But doesn't, doesn't the phase, the optical phase, show up here in the eye and the gamma? Yeah. Well, it will show up. Because there's a term yeah. to the yeah. eye, yeah. omega zero times yeah. tau, yeah. which, yeah. which shows up here. And, and this relation is the absolute value of the complex so, so the phase will affect the eigenvalues. Huh? Yes, this is. I mean, this gamma one can be complex. Uh, that's why we we have uh, uh, checked uh, this equation uh, <coughs> for this network where gamma one is complex. Yeah. But the synchronizability depends on the absolute value, not on the phase. Yeah. Yeah. So the phase. Does this not is, this is again. This is only true when tau is very large. Okay. Otherwise, not. Okay. For Bernoulli nets, we, we uh, have checked uh, <coughs> several delays and, and find, find the symmetry relation also for, for several delays. <coughs> but uh, so, what do you expect when you have very, very many delays? I expect that the chaoticity will be flat. That chaos is reduced? Yeah. For, even for a single unit, yeah, with many delays. So you see, we we uh, relate chaos to to the dynamics of the synchronization manifold, yeah? and so you want to add many terms here, with many delays, and and, and uh, so maybe you find some some canceling, yeah. Or I mean, strange enough, for Bernoulli networks, we find that the condition for chaos is independent of the delay times. Okay, that's the condition of the number of delay times or the delay time? The number of delay, just the sum of the coupling coefficients must exceed some value. Which does not apply for some of equations. But this only relates to the case, is there chaos or is there no chaos? Yes. But I wonder how chaotic is the chaos. <laughs> Whether well, it's strong or weak. Strong or weak, exactly. This I cannot answer. Okay, many thanks again.